Example 8. The graph of a parent function f is given. In each case, graph g by applying one or more transformations to f. All right, so if you just give this page a quick scan, you will see that there are four different graphs here. Each of the graphs has the same parent function. So remember, if I use that phrase parent function, that is the basic function that you have been given that you need to apply the transformations to, okay? So in each case, we'll be using the same parent function. We'll just be applying uh, a different transformation in each example, okay? So let's take a look at example A, part A here. Um, we have our parent function and we, the parent function is f, so we are trying to graph a new function g of x and to get g of x you're basically graphing f of negative x, okay? So basically if you look at this side, okay, that's telling you basically the transformation that you need to apply, okay? Um, looking at this, uh, the parent function here, it has four points emphasized, so the negative four, two, negative two, negative two, zero, negative two, and then six, two. All you have to do is basically when you do the transformation, you have to figure out where those four points go and then the entire graph will move as long as you connect your new dots with the same basic shape, okay? So in, in part A here, okay, this is F, this is the graph of F, okay? We're trying to graph F of negative X, okay? So you have to think about what kind of transformation is that? Well, it involves a negative, okay? So since a negative sign is involved, that means it is some sort of reflection, okay? So you may need to flip back to the reflection rules if you haven't, you know, memorized these yet to, to figure out what kind of reflection it is. The negative is inside the parentheses. So let's go ahead and flip back to, I think it was page seven where the reflection rules are. Here they are. Um, if you look at the three different scenarios, the one in the middle here, that's where you have a negative sign on the inside. So we need to graph a reflection across the Y axis. Okay, so that's what's going on here. This is gonna be a reflection over the Y axis. Okay, so if you remember how to do this, okay, it's basically y-axis symmetry. So if you start with a given point for y-axis symmetry, that means y is going to stay put and you're going to change the sign of the x value. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and, you know, if you, you know, you can either do it with the folding, the thinking of it as folding the sheet of paper along the y-axis and you know thinking about where the points go if you need something more structured here just make a list of old points and new points okay so let's do that here okay so I'm gonna write down the four points that I see so like I said negative four two and then negative two negative two and then zero negative two and then finally six two so we need to figure out where each of those points ends up if we basically fold our sheet of paper along the y-axis. Um, okay, so let's start with negative four, two. Okay, so basically what's gonna happen, like I said, this is the same thing as y-axis symmetry. To get where this point goes, if you do a reflection over the y-axis, you are going to change the sign of the x-coordinate. So it will become positive four. You're gonna keep the Y value the same. So this point right here is gonna get sent to four, two. Okay, so that's gonna be right here, okay? Another way you can think about this reflection for this point, okay, it is currently four units to the left of the Y axis. So if you fold the sheet of paper along the Y axis, the point's gonna get sent four units to the right of the y-axis, okay? Whichever way makes more sense to you, do it that way, okay? All right, next, the point negative two, negative two, okay? Where does it go if you fold the sheet of paper along the y-axis? Well, we know from y-axis symmetry, that means we're gonna change the sign of the x-coordinate, so it'll go from negative two to positive two. We will keep the y-value exactly the same, so it'll get sent to 
negative 2. Okay, so the, the new point is going to be 2, negative 2, and that is going to be right here. Okay, so here we go, like right there. Okay, again, you could have looked at this point and said, hey, it's two units to the left of the y-axis, so when I fold the sheet of paper, it's going to go two units to the right of the y-axis. Okay, all right, moving on to zero, negative two. Okay, we are, that's this point right here. Okay, so we need to keep, we need to change the sign of the x-coordinate. Okay, so zero doesn't have a sign associated with it, so it's just going to stay zero. We need to keep the y value the same. So this point actually stays put. That makes sense because it's on the y-axis. So if we fold our sheet of paper along the y-axis, that point won't go anywhere. All right, the last point, 6, 2, this guy, where does it go? We need to change the sign of the x-coordinate, keep the y value the same. So it is headed to negative 6, 2, which is right here. Okay, again, you could have looked at this point right here at 6, 2. It is six units to the right of the y-axis. So if you fold the sheet of paper, it's going to get sent six units to the left of the y-axis. Okay, so our four points have moved. We just need to connect them with the same basic shape. You're basically going to go from left to right, and you're going to connect each pair of points with a line segment. Okay, so if I start here, I'm going to connect these two dots like that, and then I'm going to connect the next pair like this and then finally I will connect these two points and there we go we're done okay so we have taken the original parent function that's in black and we graphed the reflection over the y-axis all right moving on to part B okay again we've got the same parent function we just need to graph a new set of transformations here okay so this is f so now we're trying to graph negative f of x minus 4 okay so there's a couple of transformations going on here okay because you see a negative sign out front and you see minus 4 inside the parentheses okay so there's two transformations we do need to stick to the order of operations as far as which order we do them in. So remember, order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. You always want to do what's in parentheses first. So we're first going to do the parentheses and then we will handle the negative sign out front. Okay, so let's talk about what this negative sign, or sorry, this what this x minus 4 in parentheses means. Okay, so x minus 4 in the parentheses, since we are adding or subtracting, we're actually subtracting inside parentheses, that is a horizontal shift. Okay, so we learned one of the first transformations we learned was how to move left or right. If you are subtracting inside the parentheses, that means you're going to the right okay by this many units so we're going to have to move each point right four units okay and then once we do that that will give us a new graph okay and then we have to apply the negative out front again you've got a negative sign that involves some kind of reflection so if you go back to page seven look at the first rule if the negative is out front that's a reflection across the x-axis okay so your second transformation here will be to reflect over the x-axis okay so let's do this okay um it's up to you if you want to do both transformations at once or if you just want to you know make a graph by applying the first transformation and then once you have that graph apply the second transformation to it that's up to you okay this is what I'm gonna do okay so I'm gonna start I'm gonna keep this in blue okay I'm gonna move each point right four units okay so if I start with the point negative four two I'm gonna move it right four units so one two three four okay it's gonna get sent right here that is the point zero two okay I'm putting an X here instead of a dot I know that I'm going to have to come back and do the reflection over the x-axis. It's not going to be a final point, so I'm just putting an x there, okay? So I'm going to come back and reflect all the x's, okay? All right, the next point, negative 2, negative 2. I need to move it right four units. 1, 2, 3, 4, OK? 
Okay, so it's going to get sent right here to 2, negative 2. Okay, the point at 0, negative 2. I need to move it four units to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to 4, negative 2. And then lastly, the point that's at 6, 2, it needs to move over four units. So 1, 2, 3, 4. It's going to go to 10, 2. Okay, so we've done the shift of the shift right four units. Okay, uh, those are the x's. Okay, so now we need to take each x and reflect it over the x axis. Or yeah, we need to take each x and reflect it over the x axis. Okay, and then that will be a final point on the graph. Okay, so let's start with the, this first x. It is at zero two. Okay, imagine you're folding your sheet of paper over the x axis. Okay, where does it go? Um, it's two units above the x-axis, so it's going to get sent two units below the x-axis. Okay, so this point will end up here. All right, the next x, it is located at two, negative two. Okay, it is two units below the x-axis. So when you fold the sheet of paper, this point's going to go above the x-axis by two units. Okay, so it will end up at two, two. Okay, I'm actually going to, let me go ahead and uh, notate these points. So this point was 0, negative 2. This point's going to be 2, 2. If we go to the third x, it's at 4, negative 2. Okay, it is 2 units below the x-axis. If you fold the sheet of paper, it's going to go 2 units above. So this point will end up at 4, 2. And then the last x, that's at 10, 2. It is 2 units above the x-axis so if you fold your sheet of paper along the x-axis it is going to go to it's going to go two units below the x-axis so it will end up at 10 negative 2. okay so your four points have moved you just want to connect them uh, go from left to right and connect each pair of dots chronologically okay so we're going to connect these two points and then we're going to connect these guys right here. And then lastly, we'll connect these two guys. So we end up with this red graph as our final graph. Okay, so basically this is what the black graph looks like if it is first shifted right four units and then it's reflected over the x-axis.